dear learners in this session i am going to discuss most important questions which can be expected from module 3 the subject is introduction to electrical engineering as you can observe the third module comprises of two components first one is dc generator other one is dc motor collectively we call it as dc machines you should have a basic knowledge about these contents first of all i'll be showing you some important questions from dc generators explain the diagram the construction features of various parts of dc generators or else you may expect in another manner with a neat sketch explain the construction of various parts of dc generator how will you answer this if you get these kind of questions it is better to explain about the following components you have to explain about the field system and mark where is field system uh, you have to talk about the armature core and the significance then armature winding commutator and the pressures uh, you please draw this diagram as well this is very important so 50 percentage of mark will be given to diagram and another 50 percentage of the marks will be given for your explanation kindly focus on the points another important question as you can observe derive an expression for emf equation of a dc generator uh, you have to explain uh, the derivation of the emf equation before derivation you have to explain the following components what is phi what is z what is p later on you have to apply the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction once you apply the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction uh, you should get this particular expression this is your final expression for emf equation of dc generator so this is very very important you may expect many so numerical example as well so another question is numerical example we have already studied about uh, dc generators and uh, based on that you can expect different kind of problems okay so another one is actually based on the dc shun generator there is a mistake in the spelling mistake shun generator please, please call it as shun generator uh, here you need to uh, the data are given first of all you have to write the given uh, data based on the data you need to uh, proceed the parameters here you need to calculate the speed you have to calculate it okay calculation of speed is important here so for that purpose you need to use the following equations First of all, you need to draw this diagram. If you draw the diagram now, almost you will be getting an idea. Later, what you are supposed to do is, please note down the equations also. You can note down the equation, like V is equal to Eg minus Ia into R. Similarly, one more equation I require to calculate the speed. So, already we discussed, Eg is equal to Zn phi by 60 into P by N. Here, what is N? N stands for speed. Okay, try to calculate it. Uh, on request, I can make a separate video only for the numerical example. I am waiting for your response. If you are, if you, if I want to make a videos on uh, like problems, numerical example, definitely I am ready. Uh, based on the interest, I will make out. Okay, I am waiting for your response. Thank you. So another one is actually a similar kind of problem. There is a problem related to shunt generator. Okay. Uh, so kindly note down whatever I mentioned now. So kindly note down the diagram, then relevant equation, then uh, find out what exact you want to calculate. Try to correlate. Similarly, there is another problem related to DC uh, DC generator. So you can use the EMF equation. Okay. Here, if it is wave winding, remember that A should be equal to 2. If it is lap winding, we can write A is equal to number of pole. Okay, armature conductor per parallel path A, that will be equal to number of pole if it is lap winding. For wave winding, A will be equal to 2. That point you have to remember. Okay. Another one is actually explain the regarding the motor. Second part is regarding the motor. I will let you know what are the important questions from the second segment of module uh, 3. So you have to focus on the back EMF of DC motor. Okay. The anyway, if you know the working of DC motor, definitely you can explain the working of uh, like a then the significance of back EMF. So, briefly point out how does DC motor operate. Later, you can draw the diagram of a motor like the armature and the shunt. Both are connected in parallel. Uh, it is, we are giving the electrical input to V. So, uh, ultimately, we will be getting the mechanical energy from the armature. Now, you have to explain the particular equation. Okay, EB is equal to Zn phi by 60 into P by, you know, P by A. Uh, later, what you can do is uh, compute the value of IA. Uh, so, make a equa particular equation that you can explain the importance of back EMF. Okay. Uh, definitely, back EMF is a driving force. Okay. It will oppose to the terminal voltage. 
So because of vacuum up only, the armature starts operating. If the vacuum up is zero, means motor will become standstill. It becomes stationary. It becomes stationary. A significance you can explain. So what will happen if the motor is at uh, no load? Uh, if vacuum up is not there, what is going to be happened? So those things you can explain with the help of uh, the, uh, the parameters. Okay. I have seen so many questions. You can refer question number 10. Derive an expression for armature torque developed in DC motor. That's also one of the most important question I have seen from several uh, question paper. So torque equation, uh, general equation of torque, you know, force into perpendicular distance. So starting from that particular equation, armature torque. Later, you can uh, write the speed like omega, angular speed. It will be like a circular motion because armature is going to rotate in a circular fashion. Omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60, where n is the linear speed. Later, apply the equation of work done. Uh, then uh, mechanical power developed and electrical power developed. You have to coincide. You have to correlate. Uh, electrical power developed will be equal to mechanical power developed. Mechanical power developed will be equal to electrical power developed. So if you like uh, electrical power will be equal to like uh, EB into IA, where mechanical power TA into 2 pi n by 60. Try to relate it. Thereafter, what you can do is you already derived the expression for back uh, like a uh, back EMF. Uh, set then pi by 60 into p by r remember that uh, back emf is applicable only for dc motor where generated emf is applicable for dc generator here we are applying the back emf over here so substitute instead of eb you can put set then pi by 60 into p by a ia will be as it is then uh, rf the side there is no change from this you can separate the value of ta what is ta here ta is nothing but uh, top developed in the armature. So that uh, that point you can separate. So ultimately we'll be getting the expression for TA. Kindly work out once. So 11th question is actually continuation of 10 to 1 only. First of all, you have to derive the expression for TA. Later on, you need to prove that TA is directly proportional to armature current. So another one is actually called a DC series motor never run at light load or no load. Why? Because if you operate the DC motor in no load condition, the motor goes dangerous speed. You can explain with the help of motor characteristics. Okay. So uh, whenever you want to start a DC series motor, you have to apply certain load and start. Otherwise, motor goes to dangerous speed. Ultimately, the burning of winding and the uh, motor is getting damaged. So explain the characteristics of DC series motor with the neat diagram or discuss the various characteristics of DC series motor with the neat diagram. That's also a very important question. In this question, you have to explain three types of characteristics, torque versus armature current characteristics, speed versus armature current characteristics, ultimately uh, speed versus torque characteristics. So you can explain with the help of equations. For example, TA is proportional to phi into IA. For series motor, phi is directly proportional to IA. Therefore, I am able to get TA proportional to IA square. So, so like that, you can explain uh, in case of uh, series motor. For shunt motor, uh, we can say that the flux is constant. Okay, phi is constant. So therefore, TA proportional to IA. So both the shunt motor characteristics and uh, series motor characteristics should be studied. Okay, uh, so first I, exp I have shown shunt motor characteristics. Second one, you can see the series motor characteristics. So I request you to go through both the type of characteristics. We cannot predict what kind of questions will be asked in the examination. Be ready for shunt motor and the series motor. Uh, since you are in the first year level, they never ask with the compound one motor. Don't worry about that. Only you have to study about the shunt motor and the series motor characteristics. Most important. See question number 14, that is shun, uh, characteristics of shunt motor, DC shunt motor. I already mentioned both are required. Then mention is application also. So motor application is very I request you to study the application of DC motor by referring this table. It is a uh, simple manner. Shunt motor. It is mainly used for the constant speed application. Where series motor, which is suitable for the variable speed application, especially for locomotive, trains, electric vehicles, we are using series motor. So we have compound load motor by hybridizing shunt motor and series motor. Okay. So these are the important tables. Uh, you have to remember for your exam point of view, the expected question is explain the applications of DC motor. From co uh, question number 16 onwards, uh, fully with the numerical example only. So I'm waiting for your reply. You can put in the comment box. I'm very, very, I'm happy to uh, solve the numerical example uh, based on your request, based on your demand. Okay. If you need that particular uh, numerical example in a, sim in a uh, simple manner, I can make out. Similarly, DC shunt motor, problems on DC shunt motor. Here, lap connected means remember that A will be equal to uh, P. If it is wave connected means uh, A is equal to 2. 
So here, very simple procedure. Remember two, three equations. One is equation for terminal voltage, equation for uh, back EMF, and equation for torque. If you know these three equations with a diagram of uh, series motor and shunt motor, uh, there is no issue with the problem. If you want, I will make out a separate video. I'll make out how to solve the numerical example. Okay, no worries about that. Similarly, uh, another important question is speed control of Shen motor and a series motor. You can expect uh, that particular question. You can refer this textbook also. Try to solve the numerical example from the following textbook. That is very important. So what is left over is I need to show you the speed control methods of series motor as well as Shen motor. Let me show you. Whenever you want to explain the speed control of DC motor, try to write the equations like uh, EB, uh, so you have to separate LHS should be at EB, EB, then RHS you can keep like this. Then you can write one expression N proportional to EB by phi A. Okay, N, uh, N proportional to EB by phi A. Okay, that equation you can, you will be getting. Okay, so this is what you have to remember. From this you can explain the speed control of uh, DC motor and shunt motor very easily. First I am going to show you uh, the shunt motor speed control method. So as you can observe, these are the popular uh, methods which is adopted for the speed control of shunt motor. What are they? Yes, one is flux control method. Uh, other one is called armature resistance control method. Third one is called armature voltage method. These are the three popular methods. Okay. So if I want to go for above rated speed, you can go for like a flux control. If I want to go for below rated speed, you can go for uh, like armature resistance control method. I let you know the diagrams also. Here you have to explain what is armature resistance control. You are keeping one variable resistance at the armature component, armature segment. Uh, later you are varying that particular resistance so that armature current is getting varied. Based on the variation in the armature current, you can control the speed of DC motor. You can explain with the help of equations as well. It is better to explain these equations. Okay, you can note down this equation. So we are making a framing and relation like N2 by N1. These are the speed, EB2 by EB1. That is equal to V minus IA2 into RA plus R, V minus IA1 into RA. So we are adding the resistance means speed is getting varied, okay? Because this, with this component is getting changed. You can explain with the help of uh, uh, circuit diagram and uh, graph. In the circuit diagram, you can see we are connecting one uh, resistance here. External resistance we are adding at the armature, okay? So that what is going to happen? We are changing armature current. With respect to change in armature current, speed is getting varied. Okay. So we can observe uh, it is mainly suitable for the speed control below the rate of speed. Let us say this is our rate of speed, maybe 1500 RPM. Okay. So in this armature method, we are mainly used for the speed control uh, less than rate of speed. Okay. With the resistance at the normal condition. Fine. You can explain the diagram also. NIA characteristics you can draw and you can mention uh, the waveform as well. So uh, that is more than sufficient. Now I am going to show you how will you control the speed of series, speed of series motor. Okay. So before that, one more method is pending. The, uh, so first method we already discussed. That is uh, uh, armature resistance control. Other one is called a flux control method. So in the flux control, it is very simple. So what you can do is first of all, draw the shunt motor. Here what you can do is mention the armature resistance then shunt resistance, everything you can mention. What you are going to do is at the flux part, at the field, you are connecting one uh, re rheostat. That means variable resistance you are connecting. So whenever you are changing the variable resistance, the uh, field, field current is getting varied. Whenever the field current is getting changed, obviously the phi will be changed, phi. So you already know that N proportional to EB by phi. Okay, EB by phi. So here there is a relation between N and phi. You are taking care of this relation. How the phi is getting changed because of changes in uh, like this resistance. So we can uh, get this particular um, waveform also. So you, you, different speed with respect to different value of resistance, the speed speed is also getting changed. See here, there is a changes in the speed. Hope you understood. This is regarding the uh, flux control. Okay. When it comes to the series motor, uh, we have different methods. The field diverter method, we can uh, creating the, the field diverter, dividing. Okay, here a divider will be uh, created. So with respect to, as the RD is increasing, we can say that there is a variation in the speed. All right. Similarly, tapped field control. Here you are keeping the tap, a lot of taps you are keeping at the lot of uh, like studs, as you can observe. 
So you are creating the tapping over the where at the field. Okay. So that means you are changing the uh, field current. Here you know that armature current and field current will be equal in case of uh, series motor. Why? Because the armature, this is your armature and this will be the field. Both are connected in series, cascade. So current flowing through the field will be equal to current flowing through the armature. O of course, whenever you are changing uh, the armature current, obviously uh, the field current, the, uh, so whenever you are changing the field current, obviously it affects the armature current as well. So whenever armature current is getting varied, obviously speed is getting changed. So you can give a brief explanation as well. Only this much you have to explain. That is more than sufficient. There are so many methods, but uh, as a first year student, this is uh, uh, more than sufficient. Okay. So hope you understood. Before examination, try to solve a few more questions. Uh, I am ready to do the numerical example based on your uh, interest. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you have any other questions. Happy learning.